Well, hello and welcome to Sunshine Hills Church Online. So glad you're joining with us today. Just got a couple announcements and I'm going to introduce our guest speaker for this morning. Uh, so just a reminder about Kids Camp and Youth Camp. I have been talking about it for a while, but Kids Camp, the deadline to register is today. So if you have not got your kids signed up yet, make sure you get online and do it today. Make sure you don't miss out on Kids Camp this summer. Uh, youth Camp deadline is still a few weeks away, so if you're a teenager and not signed up yet, you have a little bit more time. But for everybody's sanity and organization, it would be great if you get them online and registered as soon as possible. Also, VBS for our kids starts tomorrow. We are so excited to have well over 100 kids in this building. It's going to be just electric in here, and we cannot wait for um, just that energy and also for what God's going to do in the lives of our kids. So before we start today, actually, can we just take a moment and just pray for VBS? Let's just pray over our volunteers, pray for them to just have grace for the kids and patience and strength and the energy they need to make it through the week. Let's pray for our kids to be open and receptive in the midst of all the fun and all the enjoyment to really be open to what God wants to speak to them this week as well. So God, we thank you for the opportunity to once again run VBS in person this summer. We're so excited for this. Over 100 kids. That's just incredible. So God, we just thank you for these lives that are entrusted with us this week. We pray they would have a wonderful week. They would build relationships, make friends, have a blast, tell their families about all the fun they're having. Uh, and God, we pray that ultimately more than anything, the hearts and the spirits and the minds of these young people, that they would be open to receive all you have for them. God, we pray for kids to make decisions for Jesus this week. We pray for kids to... Uh, be called <laughs> to see what you are calling them to do in their lives this week. We pray for uh, kids to step into the, the fullness of the Holy Spirit this week. God, we are just open to you just br blowing through this place and making a massive impact on the lives of these kids. Be with our volunteers and our adults, the students that are helping up out this week. Help them to just have grace and patience for the kids when they maybe get a little bit out of sorts. Help them to just have knowledge and wisdom for, for what to say and what to do in every moment. And God, just give them an extra level of strength and energy to just be on all week long and not be worn out or tired by the, the fullness of the activity. God, we pray your blessing over every aspect of VBS. And we cannot wait to see what you're going to do your name. Amen. Now for today, as we continue in our More Than Shallow Summer series, I'm so excited to be uh, inviting Matthew Kroll, our student ministry director, to speak to us today. Uh, you know, I've seen him grow up, and I've seen him uh, be involved in a number of ministry areas, sharing his testimony. We've had him involved in spoken word on stage and uh, worship, all sorts of things. This is his first time speaking on a Sunday morning to our church, and I can't wait uh, for you to hear what he's shared. I got a chance to get a little preview of it. It's good. He's going to be really encouraging us and challenging us in towards how we spend our time, specifically making the most of how we spend our time with God, moving from shallow to deep in that area. So would you please join me in welcoming Matthew Kroll, our student ministry director. Church starts now. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us for online church this morning. My name is Matthew. I'm a full-time staff here at Sunshine Hills. I work with our students, uh, grades 5 to 12, running events, putting together lessons, all the fun joys that come with that, as well as I do some other stuff around here. Today I get the privilege of speaking on time. What a fun, easy topic. Everyone loves it. Um, and so we're just gonna, we're just going to dive in. As I was preparing to speak and really just um, leading on God as to where he was going to guide me, it became very clear as to what he wanted me to speak on. Today I'm going to speak on routine, time management, but really focus on how we spend our time with God, if we spend our time with God. This summer we are looking to go deeper, to go more than shallow. We're looking to take the challenge to change and no longer just be on the surface when it comes to our relationship with God. This series uh, throughout the summer is very similar to the one I'm doing with the students downstairs. So it's very much a two for one. The students get this as their lesson and you guys get to practice how we end our services every Sunday downstairs. So let's jump in. I'm just going to open us up in a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you for the chance for us to just um, connect with you. 
We pray that we would just look at the way we spend our time, look for the opportunity to just connect with you more, and just look to dive deep in our relationship with you. In your name, amen. I'm going to note right off the top that I do not have any exact formula on how to manage your time perfectly or how to spend your time. Uh, one, because I'm still figuring it out. Uh, and two, uh, because every single person is different. I'm the type of person who's recently become a night owl. I like to stay up late. But on the other hand, I also get up early. Um, I don't need a lot of sleep to function. And often <laughs> when uh, I see Danny Hunt and I tell him what time I've woken up at, he just, he just looks at me and goes, why do you do this to yourself? Uh, and I would just laugh it off, and it's just the way I am. That's the way I'm going to be. Um, and I like to take advantage of every minute of the day. And that makes me feel busy all the time. And who can relate to that? I have two young kids, a wife that's in school full-time. She's working two part-time jobs. I'm working a full-time job uh, where Danny Jones is working me to the bone and giving me lots to do. Uh, and when people ask how it's going, I often answer, busy, but good. I enjoy being busy. I enjoy working, but I often feel very out of balance. Here's a quick glimpse at what my daily routine looks like. I wake up, I shower, make lunch for everybody, get the girls ready to go for the day, read devotions with the girls, out the door by 8.30. And if it's any later than 8.30, no one in my house wants to be around me. After work, I get about 10 to 15 minutes to sit on the couch before making dinner, doing some tidying up around the house, getting everyone prepared to eat, and then getting the girls eating, then getting the girls ready for bed. Uh, and my wife, she does help, 100%, um, but because of her schooling, I've given her a pass to you know take a step back and focus more on homework. Um, but when the summer is over, she is on the hook to help out a lot more, and she knows this. And after they're in bed, I take some time to do some last-minute tidings if need, if need be, uh, play some video games, get some dishes done, and then go to bed. How many of our schedules look like this? Maybe minus the video games. Maybe your day even looks busier. But it comes down to one point. We all make time for what's most important to us. You'll notice from my rundown of the day, I did not list any specific devotion time. You see, in all of my scheduling of my day, I pick and choose random times to, to, to do my devotions. Sometimes I read my Bible in the shower, not the physical copy, but looking at it on my phone, and reflect on it while I finish the shower. I pray in the car on my way to work. I take time to pray in the evening. I find random moment in the day to journal. There's just no consistency, and then, I have, and then I go and I say, I'm too busy to set a specific time with God. We all make time for what's most important to us. That quote comes from a mentor of mine, and, a for, and the former lead pastor of Sunshine Hills Church, Tom Gardner. As a young staff, I um, really tried to prove that this quote was wrong because he said it to me quite often, and I always looked for ways to prove it wrong, and I was very, very unsuccessful. Tom knows his stuff. As I mentioned, I have time for video games, and my question for you is, do you have time for leisure? Do you have time to scroll on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat? Do you have time to watch a TV show or read a good book? Do you do those things before spending any time with God? depending on how you answer that question, may determine where you need to go next. Did you answer yes? Did you answer no? Was your answer, I want to get there, or how do I get there? We need to start by creating an invitation. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, it says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. When we take time for him, even five minutes, when we come with an attitude of openness and vulnerability, seeking God with all our heart, he finds us. When you take your time with him, is that the attitude you come with? Or is it an attitude of just checking the box? To say, maybe you did your devotions and then move on with your life. 
Look to come and make the most of your time with God. Create a plan to expand on how that looks. Come into it knowing what you want to accomplish versus just opening up your Bible and flipping to a random page. Let's get from a shallow way of thinking when it comes to our time with God and expand and push to go deeper with our time with God. Once we have a change in our heart and our attitude, we have to create time for him. It can start by taking five minutes of your lunch break at work or five minutes when you wake up or five minutes when you go to bed. Find a pocket of time that is consistent and start there. And I encourage you that once you find that time, don't just um, continue with the five minutes. Look to go further. But if we really look at our lives, if we write down our daily schedule day in and day out, I guarantee that you can find a pocket of time to commit to God. As much as we want to say it, just showing up to church on Sunday does not mean that God is the most important thing to us. It shows that church is important to us, and that is good. You make time for church, and that is good. But what about Monday to Saturday? And Danny Jones said on a Sunday back in April or May, he said, we're not just here to do church. We're here to challenge ourselves reach to be closer to God and be a light to the people around us. How can we be a light if we are not taking time for God in our everyday life? That time can look different for everyone, but the element should be the same. We need to take time in his word. His word never changes. It continues to give life. And when you take time to read and focus in on what the Bible has to say, Even passages you've read hundreds of times, something new can come out of that. Take time to reflect on the words that you read. Take time to ask the question, how does it apply to you today? Make this your own. Make this, the Bible reading, unique. For me, I love to read while listening at the same time to the audio. That is what works for me. Find what works for you, make a plan, and commit to it. Once you make it your own, and once you make a plan for your Bible reading, you can get out of that shallow end and into the deep end. We need to take time to pray and listen. Prayer is our conversation with God. Is it our, it's our chance to talk with Him. It could be done anywhere, anytime, but when you carve out a very specific time for it, when you set aside time to pray and listen for God, you can have a lot more focus. I can pray while driving, I can pray while setting up for an event, but it's in those quiet moments that I hear him the best. At our church's men's retreat this past year, I was open to a new way of thinking when it came to listening to God. Often our prayers are us creating a list and then giving God time to speak at the end or not even giving him a chance to speak, giving him our list and moving on. I encourage us to switch it up. Let God start the conversation. Maybe ask him a question. God, what's next in my life? What do you see in me? Do you have a word for someone else that I need to share? And then take time to listen. We don't need to do that every time we take time to pray. But I encourage you to go back and forth between the two models. Switch it up. Keep it dynamic. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you start to listen? Write those things down. If it's a picture, describe it or draw it. Those could be the moments where God is speaking to you. Some other things that you can add to your time with God. Worshiping him with music. In our discipleship course uh, that I ran for grade 11s and 12s, about a month ago, we were learning about prayer and worship, and there's a psalm that came up. And it has a very, uh, very obvious point here. I'll see if you can figure it out. Psalms chapter 47, verse 5 to 7 says, God has ascended amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid sounding trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing to him a psalm of praise. I don't know about you, but I think that the author here is trying to, trying to get at something. Take time and sing. Take time and praise him. That can be through your own song or flipping on a worship song in the background and 
th- uh, thinking of him, but take time to worship him. And the last one I want to touch on today is journaling. Now, I used to not see the value in doing this. I thought journaling was quite dumb. I um, didn't like to be open and honest about my emotions. I'm also, I wouldn't class my, classify myself as an emotional person. But in starting to journal about three months ago, I have found in my writings that there's things that have been sitting in the back of my mind that I've just dismissed. And they've come up and I've been able to reflect, deal with them, learn from them. I've found um, that through writing everything on my mind, it clears my mind and sets me up for a time of focus with God. And because of this, I can really just um, listen to God and not have those worries that I wrote about on my mind. So this is what I want to leave you with today. Is spending time with God is something you want to make most important to you. Make a plan. Even if it's five minutes, don't just flip open your Bible and be like, I did, my, I did my due diligence. Create a plan ahead of time to get the most out of your time with God. Dive deeper. Go more than just shallow. So I don't want to just leave you with these words. I want us to practice them. So we're going to do things a little bit differently. So for you guys at home, you will need a Bible, paper, and a pen pen or pencil, your preference. We're going to take time to clear our minds and listen for God. We're going to feel God move. I encourage you to start by finding a worship song that you can really um, focus in and just help clear your mind of what's going on right now in your life. If you don't know one, I recommend Make Room by Community Music as a great song to just create space for God. You'll notice in this last part that I'll take some significant pauses. And that's because after each step of what I'm asking you to do today, I want to give you a chance to be able to pause and then do the thing and then hit play again. So take time and listen to a song and clear your minds. Now that you've done that, take your lined piece of paper get your pen, we're going to have you journal. Set a timer for five minutes, and I want you to write and and just go. Write about what was good about your week, write about what sucked, what was not great, maybe a hope or dream that you have that hasn't been fulfilled. Maybe there's something that you've seen God moving in in your life. Take five minutes and just write. This is yours. This is for you. I'm not going to ask you to snap a pic and share it on social media. These are your words, your feelings, your emotions. So take some time, five minutes, and just write. Take a few minutes and listen for God. Take three or four minutes. Don't have any music on. Put your journal paper paper aside. And I just want you to ask God a question. If you don't know a question, ask him to share something he sees in you. A word, a sentence, a phrase. And just sit there and listen. If something pops up in your mind, write it down right away. God can speak through your thoughts. If there's a picture... Write it, describe it, draw it. God can speak through pictures. Take time, listen for God, and write down those moments because any one of those moments can be God speaking to you. close us in prayer, and then I have only two last things to say. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for speaking to us today. Thank you for um, surrounding us with your spirit, and I pray that as we look at our days, as we look at moving deeper in a relationship with you, I pray that we would just 
uh, organize our time to show, to show how important you are to us. Pray that we would just make you the most important thing in our lives. In your name, amen. So the last thing I have is this. If you feel you had a word or something you want to share, email one of our pastors. Their emails will be at the bottom of the screen. And um, let us know. If it's something that you want to keep personally, that's for you. And also, if you want to use this video to help set up some devotion time and time with God, feel free to come back. You can skip right to this end part and use the pauses as we have did, but continually come back and start to create a time with God that will move your relationship deeper. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Matthew, for sharing with us this morning. What a wonderful word. What a very challenging word. I know I'm challenged in regards to how I spend my time with God and how I can make that more productive and more purposeful. Uh, thank you for leading us in that activity. I pray that's a benefit and blessing to all those who took part in it. And, you know, as we talk about spending time with God and really being um, purposeful with that, what a wonderful time to transition into the communion table. You know, we often we do communion on a monthly basis, and it can be one, can be one of those things that becomes very much like a, a, a check-the-box type of thing, you know, did that, took communion. But this is a moment between you uh, and between God remembering what Jesus did on the cross for us. So let's make the most of this time now that we have as we take communion together. So if you need to just pause the video for a second and go grab the elements, I'm not going anywhere. Just pause, grab it, come right back. Uh, but let's take a moment, uh, just quiet ourselves, get in the headspace where we're ready to reflect on what Christ did for us. Thank you, Jesus. So the Apostle Paul, he writes in 1 Corinthians, it says, For I received from the, Lord, from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This time is about remembering what he did for us. This time is about remembering and reflecting on uh, his body broken on the cross and his blood poured out for, for us, for you, for me. The ultimate price is paid, not just for a select few, but for every person, ever, one time for all. It's a, what an incredible picture. So we take this time to reflect on that, to allow the immensity of what he did to really just like hit home for us and then to thank him for the price that he paid for us. So if you have your elements, uh, take hold of the bread. I'll grab mine in a second. We're going to break it together and then eat. Jesus, we thank you for your body that has been broken for us. We thank you for the sacrifice you made on behalf of myself, everyone watching, everyone in our church, everyone who has ever lived. God, we thank you for the sacrifice. We remember it today, and we praise you for what that means for us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Church, let's eat together. And then take your cup. Jesus, we thank you for your blood poured out for us. Your blood that was poured out, symbolic of your love, your grace, your peace poured over us. God, we thank you that your, your blood that washes us clean, washes away the sin, washes away the guilt, washes away the shame, allows us to stand confidently before you. Jesus, we thank you for what was poured out, what covers us, what allows us now to walk in a newness of life with you. Amen. Let's drink together. The last thing is this. If you're watching today, and you've watched this moment and you're not really quite sure what to make of it because you've never invited Jesus to come be, come be part of your life. He's just waiting there for you. He loves you. He cares for you. 
And this is your moment, this is your time to make that choice, make a decision. So if you're watching today and you'd like to make that choice to have Jesus come be part of your life, just pray this prayer along with me. Jesus, looking, reflecting on what was just said, I recognize that you died on the cross for me. I recognize that you rose again victoriously so I can walk in a new life. Jesus, I need your grace. I need your mercy. I need your forgiveness. I repent of the things that I've done, and I turn now to you and to the new life that you have for me. I want to walk in all that you have for me. So, Jesus, I accept you. I declare my belief in you today. Come be part of my life. Amen. If that's you, we want to celebrate with you. What a wonderful decision you just made. Please let someone know. Contact the church office. Message one of the pastors. Uh, let the person know that I invite you to join us online today. We also want to equip you. So if you made that decision, let us know so we can get you a Bible. So we can let you know how to get connected to being part of our church and what's going on here. Uh, we just are so excited to know that people are making decisions for Jesus. So we love you guys. We care for you guys. Please, as always, reach out if you have any prayer requests or any needs. We want to make sure that we are... Um, meeting the needs of our people and praying for you who need prayer. Uh, We'll see you soon. Have a great week.